I am Shua. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. Good morning, Dr. Joe. Good and morning, Shwa. I know you don't want me to call you doctor. <laughs> I will, I'll call you Joe. That's fine. Okay. So thank you for taking our time and being here with me. Great. It's a pleasure to be here and to share this time with you. So I want you to introduce uh, yourself a little and then we can move on from there. Uh, well, I've been here at Merrimack College in Massachusetts for over 40 years. Uh, when I first arrived, way back in 1974, I uh, thought, well, I'll be here for a year or two mm. uh, and then move on. <laughs> okay. But life had other plans for me. Uh, but I've been very happy. It's been a good place to, to teach, uh, to nurture upcoming generations, uh, to research and write, and uh, to be a member of a, a community that, has, that values education and and the personal growth and development, not only of our students, but of, of everyone in the Merrimack community. Uh, I also, uh, over the years, I slowly moved at one point from theology into the study of psychology and became a, a yes. clinical psychologist. That's what I wanted to mention, actually. Yeah. The, that that uh, aspect of yours, which I um, di it didn't register before, but I have read before, and then I read it last night again, and I was like, I need to ask about that also when we'll talk about um, parenting and how mm -hmm. it, um, how what have you explored so far? So, are are you doing research also in that in that area? Uh, no, I I practice as a clinical psychologist for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but slowly uh, at one point I had to make a decision: mm -hmm. would I go direct in the direction of psychology or return to higher uh, education and teaching and administration and I chose to stay in uh, in college college work but I still keep up my reading good thank you all right so I understand and as much as I know that you are a parent also yes uh, and how many children do you have we have two children our daughter is 32 okay. I'm not quite sure how that happened so quickly <laughs> I, I think we just took her to kindergarten oh, wow. Uh, and our son is 27, okay. and uh, they're both married, okay. um, yeah. and we're very blessed. They have good spouses. So. Okay. So both have children, or one? No, our, our daughter has a seven-month-old okay. uh, yes. little girl. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so what type of father were you when your, you were, your children were growing or they were younger? What kind of father would you define yourself? I'm sure if I asked your wife or others or your children, it would be... Well, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but how well, do you see yourself? Well, I was very fortunate. It, you know, working in the university setting, uh, you work hard, but there's in, built-in flexibility. So I was able to be involved with my children um, we did, my wife was a teacher and she took some time off, but eventually she w wanted to go back to work. But I was able, we were able to uh, balance our lives. And uh, I remember some of my fondest memories of when our daughter was uh, two, three years old. Mm -hmm. I would have Tuesdays off because mm -hmm. I often had to work on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would go to the beach, mm -hmm. uh, we would go you know, to the forest and walking. And I still remember those those days very fondly. So I was able to be involved, and uh, my wife and I both cook. Okay. But I enjoy cooking. Uh, she finds it a bit of a, a chore. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I enjoy it, and uh, so I was able to play a nurturing role, which was important to me. That's interesting, uh, yeah. So you were not only the father who just came after the whole day and just, you know, saw no, him for a few minutes and... No. <laughs> not the... <laughs> no, I feel I would have missed a real important part of life uh -huh. and a real blessing. So were you conscious of this, that you wanted to do this way or be there and be able to, you know, maybe make breakfast for your children and do all that? Yes. Uh, I was... 35 when I got married. Okay. So, um, you know, I thought a lot about 
what it might mean to be a parent. I, uh, you did? Okay. That's good. Being in a university setting, having studied psychology, I, I was very aware and conscious of parenting roles and what can be helpful for children. Mm -hmm. So I would say I've made some very conscious decisions yes, about parenting, That's and uh, uh, I'm very happy uh -huh. that I did. So, yeah, so not, I mean, not to be judgmental or blame other parents who don't do that, but mainly what, I mean, you doing that is encouraging, and you're, you were, I mean, you have been in this world for some time and in the time and age that you became a father you know mm -hmm. we were not so into the the media and the way we are today uh, that's right that's right? right and the knowledge and you know uh, all with the children that how you should be or you you shouldn't be i mean we did have i mean decades before us we we had all this but what i'm thinking is that you were so conscious were were your parents that way as well uh, I mean, uh, what type of parents did you have? That well, our our father was a very sweet and kind man. Yeah. Uh, he had his own business. He was mm -hmm. a an autom automobile mechanic, mm -hmm. and the gas station or the mm -hmm. the garage was just across the street. Uh, so he was he would come home for lunch, mm -hmm. uh, and we would go over there and take snacks to him. So mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you have a family business. Mm -hmm. Your parents work very hard, but they don't disappear for the day. Mm. Uh, he wasn't a quote businessman mm -hmm. with a uh, briefcase. And yeah, that. and many of my friends' fathers were. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember feeling, oh, my father's. I hate to say this now, but my father was just a mechanic, mm -hmm. whereas other of my friends had fathers who were uh, businessmen who got on the train every day mm -hmm. and disappeared for nine, ten hours. Mm -hmm. But now that I look back, I feel how fortunate I was. Mm, um, yep. That he was there and you were able to have a relationship. So yeah. You had a good relation with your father? Oh, yes. Very okay. good, yeah. And our, our mother was a stay-at-home mother, as yeah. most yeah, women oh, were yeah. in those days. Of course. Uh, so we had a very secure stable. home and stable home. Okay. Yeah. And that's where it comes back to. This is some, something very normal, average, uh, to think about, oh, your parents are together. Your father is providing you, you have a good relationship. But it's not average or normal anymore, or it hasn't been. And it does show, it reflects in your life. I think so. Um, you know, our family life wasn't perfect, but yeah. as I look back, there was a stability there, and I, I knew I could count on my parents. I never even imagined that it would be otherwise. Mm. And I know now from so many years of dealing with young people, yes. 18, 19, yes. 20, mm -hmm. um, that is not the case for mm -hmm. so many people. And you see that it affects them? Do you see that? Is, is, is un instability of the home and parents, does it affect the children? It certainly can. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say in some cases uh, I can see a direct relationship between struggles that the uh, college student might be having. Mm -hmm. uh, and difficulties they may have incurred mm -hmm. growing up. <clears throat> On the other hand, others, the, the struggles make them stronger and make them grow up uh, more quickly, mm -hmm. uh, and they become aware. They also become aware of the importance of stability and fidelity and make a resolve that it, their own life is going to be different. Mm -hmm. So I've seen both. So I wanted to ask you through your work, through your teaching, mm -hmm. some things that you can suggest or advise that people can do in order to have some uh, mindfulness uh, while you are being parent or to be or how to deal with the children. Right. We, we were discussing this in class just the other day. Um, and... You know, you could think of it in, in three ways. One is parents were very, very strict. One young lady was complaining uh, that her parents were very strict when she was growing up. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked, but did you know they loved you mm -hmm. as well? And she said, oh, yeah, that was not a problem. Oh, okay. And I said, well, that's the best combination where there is a loving discipline. Mm -hmm. um, you can have parents who provide no discipline, uh, 
where the child might be looking for boundaries and exploring boundaries and finds none, that can be very confusing mm -hmm. for a child, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not only a toddler, but even as they grow older. Uh, or you can have discipline without love, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a strict military style mm -hmm. where there is no or very little warmth and yeah. engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, both the totally free parenting that doesn't provide boundaries and the strict parenting without love uh, lead to possible problems. Mm -hmm. The best combination, and studies have shown this, mm -hmm. that a loving discipline is the healthiest environment for mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were talking about that in class. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you provide the proper boundaries for mm -hmm. your children yeah. that are age appropriate mm -hmm. as they grow? Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, how do you assure them and uh, express to them your love mm. and concern for mm. them? Mm. Uh, and I think another very, very important aspect of parenting is the ability to listen yeah. to your children. Uh, and listening, we often think of listening as passive. We kind of sit back and allow the, the words to enter our ears and our brains. Mm. But there's such a thing as active listening or uh, empathic listening where you as the listener actually work hard to imagine how it is for that person, that child, to be telling you the story they're telling you or to be sharing their feelings or perhaps sharing a sense of guilt or shame or whatever and to, to listen actively uh, with love that is non-judgmental but that really works hard at paying attention. Uh, that's not always easy, especially uh, life can get very hectic. Mm -hmm. If you have several children, mm -hmm. you have competing demands, mm -hmm. uh, you have their mm -hmm. dinners to take care of, you, you have mm -hmm. the water heater breaks, mm -hmm. you have uh, the weather and, and difficulties at school. Uh, but I think that is one of the greatest gifts a parent can give their child so is that active listening because listening empowers us mm. it it strengthens the soul mm. in other words say it when we know that someone is actually caring enough to listen uh, so there are times we certainly have to set boundaries there are times when we have to give advice uh, but more important than either of those is listening to, to I'm children. so happy and glad that you mentioned that because I am hearing this repeatedly from people who are good listeners, mm -hmm. and I know that you are. And um, this is such an important... So would you call this a skill? Yeah, I, that's a good it word for it. It doesn't come naturally. I think... Uh, Maybe to some people. To some people it might be natural, but even the, even then... Uh, you have to be you know, If someone has the talent for playing the piano, uh -huh. they still need to practice. Exactly. And I think uh, we need to practice listening. I think mm -hmm. it's a skill. Mm -hmm. It's something that I learned uh, and, I and had to, to practice that. as a clinical psychologist. Mm. Dr. Kelly, thank you so much. It was wonderful. My pleasure, Schwab. Wonderful. It's good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Schwa.